Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at snapping. Snapping is going to become very important quickly when constructing objects in a scene and needing to move those objects to predetermined locations. Precise, Precise locations. Precise locations, yeah. absolutely. So, so far, you guys will notice that in this lesson, building the set, we've been building the foundation. That's right. You guys now know how to create basic mm -hmm. geometry. You now know how to select, select your basic geometry. You know how to manipulate it, move it around, rotate it, scale it. You even know how to move its pivot point. Mm -hmm. Now, in this lesson, we're going to deal with snapping our objects to precise locations. And basically, we're snapping this pivot point. That's right. The object just goes along for the ride. Now, there's three different types of snaps that we're going to look at. We've got grid snap. Zach is modeling them right now. Yes, here we go. I'm playing. We've got the, the yeah. grid snap. Mm -hmm. We've got the lovely curve snap. <laughs> and we've got the fantastic point snap. That's right. Okay. So these things allow us to snap to different things, different mm -hmm. items. So let's start out with something simple. Zach, demonstrate grid snapping. Well, I'll begin just by creating a NURB sphere that we can snap. Now, to make the snaps more apparent, I'm going to scale this sphere down to 0.25, and then we'll frame up on it, and I'll shade the viewport. So we can see our grid nice and big, and we can see this sphere right in the middle. Now, what grid snapping is actually going to do is snap or immediately move our object to an intersection along our grid. So to activate this, I mean, it's obviously not on all the time. If I just grab an object and drag it toward a, it's a just grid a intersection. just smooth motion as you move it around. Exactly. I, I'm not directly on that intersection. No. So let's undo that. Up here in my status line, I can click the Snap to Grids toggle. Notice after I click it, it stays depressed. Also notice my Move Tool Manipulator. The center has changed from a yellow square to a yellow circle. You're going to see that circle whenever any form of snapping is enabled, so just keep that in mind. So now that I've done that, I can just drag around my grid, and look at this. Snap, snap, snap. snap. Now you see why they call it snapping. Just Jerry, makes you want to say snap. <laughs> Start snapping your fingers. That's right. But uh, you're going to see this immediate motion to these grid inter intersections while you work. And I can drag along a single axis if I like and I'm snapping to points along that axis, and so on in this direction as well. Okay, now that of course is while keeping that button pushed in above. Now if Zach clicks on the snap button again, it's gonna simply turn off. That's right. There's hotkeys as well. There are, and I yeah. love my hotkeys. So let's go ahead and introduce the hotkey for grid snapping. The hotkey for grid snapping is the X key. That's right, and it's very interesting how it works. While you are holding X down, you will notice that the grid snapping icon up on the status line is depressed. So I'm not clicking right now. I'm actually just hitting the X key. And well, move, your, move your mouse from over. Mouse. Yeah, so, <laughs> so they believe you. So they, they believe you. me. Now he can you hold doubt me? <laughs> he can hold that X key down with his finger, and while holding it down, he continues to snap. We get the exact same kind of behavior. It's a fantastic hotkey because it's it's quick. It's just snap, 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 done snapping. That's right. And this grid snapping will work on any grid, not necessarily just the one available in the perspective view. I can go to the front view, and I can hold down X, and I can snap in here. I can go into the side view or the top view, any view. Any, play, any view that has a grid, I can snap to intersections inside of it. That's right. Now, that's pretty cool. That all. is pretty cool. But you've had to drag it. That's right. What if you know exactly where you want it to go? Well, do you want better? What if my object is currently outside my view? Okay, that works And I too. don't even see it, but I know I need that sphere to be at this exact location. That's right. This is where you get into the middle mouse gesture technique, which is very, very important when it comes to snapping. And I've seen countless uh, beginner students have a hard time with this, so be sure you listen in, be sure you practice this several times. But show them first. I mean, I'm go ahead. Show them first. I mean, I mean, back out so they can see the sphere. Okay, so here watch we what go. So here's the sphere. He's way, way out here, and I want him right there. So a little, uh, like one so negative one. Yeah. I'm gonna hold down the X key. So notice we immediately go to grid snapping. You'll see the little circle appear. Of course, my gr uh, grid snapping toggle gets depressed. He's not down. He's pushed in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put my mouse cursor right over the point on the grid where I want my sphere to go. Then I'm going to click down with the middle mouse button, like the mouse wheel on most mouses. Now, clicking alone will not do it. I can click all day and nothing will happen. Actually, there is something that will happen. Now, take a look at your move tool. Sure. Your icon's going to change up just a little bit while you're holding the middle mouse button down. You That's lose right. your arrows, and it's now it's waiting for you to gesture the mouse. That's right. You're not going to see a physical effect of the object moving until you make a minor gesture somewhere near the point where you want the object to snap. So as I gesture the mouse, boom, yep, pops right to this location. Now, what is meant by gesture? 
Just wiggle it around. Just wiggle a the mouse a little bit. You'll just see. Hold down the middle mouse button and take a little wiggle. Don't be scared. <laughs> just just do it on your own. So I can pick maybe this point out here. Hold down X, middle mouse gesture, boom. Mm. And maybe over here, middle mouse gesture, boom. And as I was mentioning, this is very handy if you can't see your object, but you know you have it selected. Because I could maybe pick on this point, hold down X, bring it right into my scene. How cool is that? And it works out really cool in one other way. What if you want to constrain to a particular axis? Oh, absolutely. Say I want to move only in a single axis while snapping. I could select, say, just the Y axis. How do we know it's selected? Again, just to reiterate, that axis turns yellow, so we know that it's been chosen. So now, let's say I want to move this object only in Y to a particular elevation. So let's say anywhere along this grid line. And that will be the elevation, but you don't want it to move in regards to X or Z. That's right. Basically, we don't want this. We want the object just to move straight up to this elevation, but we want it to maintain its original location in the Z axis. That's right, and X. Z and X. So we'll go ahead and select the uh, Y axis. Now, I'll just move to anywhere along this grid line. While this axis is selected, I'll hold down X, middle mouse gesture, and we only move in the selected axis. How cool is that? So, like I said, just select any axis you like, and that is the only axis you will move in. If you are a complete newbie to the wonderful world of Maya, please rewind this section where Zach was discussing how this worked. Watch it again and practice it. And I say this from experience mm -hmm. as an instructor. I have seen so many students get confused with holding down X and then hitting the left mouse button or holding down the middle mouse button and then they click the left mouse button oh to yeah. do their gesture and they get their, their combination messed up. Practice this one because this is so handy. And very important. Especially and when you get into modeling. I can't count the number of times I've been called over to a student's desk. who they, They'll tell me, you know, snapping isn't working. I'm sorry, it's just not working. And I'll come over and I'll hold down the Alt key and I will uh, middle mouse click and gesture. So just hold down X, middle mouse gesture, and boom. And it works just fine. So just make sure you get the pattern down. There'll That's be what times it's all about. you may grab an entire row of CVs, mm -hmm. and you need to snap that row straight up a certain height. Sure. Just to line them all up so they become a straight row. I mean, it's just there's some very Lots nice of different ways to use things this. you can do using this. Okay, so that is grid snapping. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to a different kind of snapping now. Let's pick on curve snapping, which is the second one over. Now, curve snapping is, obviously, as you might imagine, going to require a curve. Mm -hmm. So really quickly, I'll go over into my Curves tab. We'll pick on the EP Curve tool. And really fast, I'll just create a curve. So something about like so. Curve snapping allows you to snap any object to any point along a curve. Now, what can you use as curves? You can use NURBS curves, like I'm using here. You can use isoparms of NURBS objects. Big, scary word, but not really all that bad. When I say isoparm of a NURBS object, I mean these edges you see along its surface. So don't let the, the big word scare you off just yet. You can also use edges of a polygon object. So if I had maybe a polygon cube, and oh, that's a NURBS cube. <laughs> I should be smacked for that. Smack me. Okay, or don't. So we'll go ahead and scale this up. So I have a, a NURB, uh, polygon cube as well with my NURBS sphere. So to use this, I can, of course, hit my toggle up here at the top of the view. We'll get my move tool out. And when I'm... Hello. You gotta get focus back to there the viewport. There we go. Get focus. 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 Ooh, that sounds gross. <laughs> that sounds bad. Get focus back to the viewport. Now, while this is on, clicking and dragging with the left mouse button is officially useless because right. Maya thinks you want to select this object. Right. So at this point, you have to shift over and start using that middle mouse technique we were talking about earlier. So I can put my mouse over the curve. Let's go ahead and move out so we can see the curve a little better. Click down with the middle mouse button and gesture, and we pop right to the curve. Now, as I move my mouse anywhere near the curve, you'll notice we're just moving along it, just like train tracks. Curve snapping, ladies and gentlemen. Snapping directly to a curve. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we can also use the edges of a polygon object. So, for example, I can middle mouse gesture right over one of these edges, and notice we're just moving along the extents of this polygonal edge. And one more quick example, just... Oh, just to show the isoparm thing, let's go ahead and bring up a NURB sphere, really big NURB sphere. And I'll take our little sphere here, and I'll hold down, well, we've already got curve snapping on, so I'll middle mouse click. Let's do this. I'll do the wireframe, and then we can click. Um, check out the Thank gesture, you. yeah. <laughs> so, there look at this. Go. So, we're moving along the surface of this sphere now. 
And the only reason a second ago it didn't jump right to it is because Zach had it moving only in the Z-axis. That's right. I'd click the Z-axis by accident. So, with that, we have curve snapping. Very simple, very handy to use, especially if you need to get uh, an object or a component along an existing surface or shape. So, I'll go ahead and nuke out my curve. And now let's go ahead and turn that uh, button off in the status line real quick and talk of just real the quick. Hot key. The hot key. Got to do the hot key. In fact, it's so important that I'll create another real quick curve, something like so. <laughs> and let's talk about using the hot key. The hot key for curve snapping is very difficult to remember. It's C. Ooh. C for curve. curve. It's also right next to the X key for grid snapping. So if we hold down C, of course, because we're using any sort of snapping, you can see our manipulator gets the circle in the middle. Hold down C, put our mouse over the curve, middle mouse, gesture, and boom. So we don't have to use the status line at all. Everything else works exactly as I've already demonstrated. Very nice. So with that, we'll kill out our curve for the second and final time, and we'll move over to point snapping. Point snapping allows you to snap to a point in space. Now, what can you use as a point in space? All sorts of things. You can use CVs. You can use vertices of a polygon object. When I say CVs, I mean a control vertex. Joints. Joints. Anything. Really, there's a, a pivot points of certain objects. All kinds of things you can snap to. For this example, I'm going to create a polygon cube. Okay. And we'll scale this up nice and big. And I'll leave this on wireframe so that we can see all eight uh, points, all eight vertices of this cube, meaning the corners, of course. And I'll select my sphere. We'll get our move tool. Now, I'll just go ahead and activate this, and I'm just going to deactivate it immediately. We've already talked about how the hotkeys will depress that button for us, so I'll just resort to the hotkey, which is the V key, right next to C. All three of your main snaps are X, C, and V. So uh, you see us hold down the V key, and you can see my manipulator change here into the little circle. So hold down V, mouse over one of these vertices, or one of these points, middle mouse gesture, pop. And as I start dragging around closer to other points, you'll notice we're snapping to these points of the object. So there you go. There you go. And real quick, if you want to get to the center of this. The center of the object? Yeah. Real quick, come up to display. Oh, okay. Go down to component display. Up oh, a few. I see where you're going. Yeah. And turn on the local rotation axis. Mm -hmm. Up a few. There we so go. Like so. And well, oh, of course look who you had for the selected. Cube. So here's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and select the cube, and I'll just hit G to turn that on for him. To repeat the last. That's right. We're repeating the last command, so I'll hit G to repeat the last there command here, go. which will switch that off. So now we'll just pretend he had the cube selected when he was going up through the there menus. You. Now, just simply snap to the center. Hold down V for point snapping, mouse over this point, and pop. There you go. Right to the center of the object. I thought you guys might like to see that. Yeah. So yeah, point snapping is fantastic when you need to select uh, vertices and snap them to other vertices. Uh, again, to skeleton joints, to all sorts any of things. point like yeah. item. Uh, like, for example, just a real quick thing. Let's say you have skeleton joints uh, and you're trying to put geometry right in their place, like you're building a robot. Mm -hmm. Not to hint at anything. <laughs> uh, you could snap like a cylinder for a joint right to an existing joint location oh, using sure. this method. Yep, Speed absolutely. up your process. So, with that, really, that's all we want to show you guys for snapping. We're going to be using it a lot throughout the videos coming up. Absolutely. It's very important. And again, I stress, please, if you're totally new to this, I highly recommend you practice this and get very comfortable doing it on the fly using the hotkeys. That's it. So, with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot, guys.